Hello again, Mr. RG Stuff, back in the workshop with this fake gramophone. Now I've mentioned a few times before that it doesn't track very well across the record, and what I mean is that as the sound box moves across the record like so, it has a habit of getting jammed. And there are two obvious problems here, one of which is this joint here. So if I just demonstrate, that's really loose. And the other problem is this joint here. And again, you should be able to see that that's really loose too. Basically, what can happen is that the back joint just jams up and stops the tone arm moving. Now, if I just angle the camera down so you can see the joint, you can see that it's just a rough brass casting. And it isn't completely round, or not perfectly round. And the pipe that it goes into, which holds the horn, isn't completely round either. So though most of the time it's sort of okay, it can actually just get stuck, depending on the angle, that brass part can get stuck in the silver tube. Now you should be able to see a screw head there as well. This is a long screw that connects the base of the tone arm to the back bracket. I'm gonna look at that now as it's very loose and I might get away with just tightening it up a bit. So what have we got? I've taken the sound box off just to give myself a bit more space to work. Quite how this arrangement is supposed to work I don't know. I almost wonder if the brass bit is threaded because this screw doesn't seem to sort of go up and down very easily at all. So I'm going to take this nut off here. and unscrew this long screw here as well. So there are screw threads in there after all, and although that's not a great design, it does explain how the tone arm is basically sitting up on the screw, even though there's not like a nut or anything underneath it. While we're here, let's take this other screw out here and have a look at this joint. I mean, one thing worth noting is just how thick this metal is. This is much, much thicker than you'd expect a tone arm, certainly on a sort of 1920s, 1930s portable to be. This machine is trying to be maybe 1910, 1915, I'm not really sure. Um, so maybe the tone arms were a bit thicker on those, but uh, it still seems very, a very sort of heavy gauge of metal to be using. Right, just a little screw there. Now at some point I'll check the screw threads on these, if I remember. They don't look like metric ones, they actually look more like imperial ones. So you can see that this works basically by having the screw run in this channel here, which allows it to turn over, but only to a certain point. But that channel is very sort of crudely filed. I mean, I bet that's been done by hand, probably drilled out and then um, filed out by hand. And the screw just slops, or slops around all the way in there. So that's probably fixable. What I do find interesting is that although this will jam up if I put it in like that, there's no problem when I put it in from the other end. And actually, if you look inside, you might be able to see there's some rough edges. And basically, it looks like this tube has just been jammed into this bracket in order to keep it in place. Now, my first thought was to file down these rough edges. However, as you can see, there's not really much clearance here. So if this was allowed to go further up, that might actually cause a problem. So what I've done is I've hunted around in the workshop and I've found this washer here. And this almost fits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down on the lathe and actually insert it in there. And therefore the top of this should then run on that washer surface 
rather than on the rough part. Now getting it turned down on the lathe wasn't as easy as I thought as it was quite difficult to keep the washer tight while the lathe tool tried to cut it. However, I did manage in the end, although I did resort to some filing also. Right, so here is the turn down washer. Now it does fit, although it's quite tight. But I think once the tone arm is in position, that will push up nicely against that and seat it better. Okay, so I put the washer in and the brass tone arm now butts up against it. And because there's no rough edges, it does actually move side to side quite freely. Now you may see there's still quite a bit of slop there. And the problem is that that's inherent in the design. The only thing holding it all in place is that screw in the middle. And that goes into a hole in this casting. Now originally there was one nut here and I found another one. In fact I found two new ones. I think they're 3 16th British Standard Whitworth. And although that's done up as a lock nut, it doesn't matter because the screw can still work its way up. It can basically just unscrew upwards because the actual screw that's uh, holding it is the, the tone arm. So it can just work its way up. So it doesn't really matter what I do with this current design. There's always going to be some slop there. Now I think I can solve that, but I'm not going to solve that now. For the minute, that's good enough. That should work fine. The other thing I've done is I've put a little bit of tape here. Now again, this deserves something better, but um, you're just taking a little bit of the slop out of that action there. So um, we'll give this a go now. I'll put it back on the gramophone and we'll give it a go. If you got this far, then maybe you'd like to give me a like. Thank you. Right, well it did play a record and a 12 inch one at that. This I believe is a, an acoustically recorded record from about 1915. Now if you watch the needle you can see that the arc doesn't end in the centre, it actually ends slightly behind the centre. And that's not good news. That means that the tone arm is not the right length for the position of the turntable. Now that might be okay actually because some of the solutions for fixing this joint here involve adding a bit of extra length to it and therefore if I do that I won't have to move the back bracket. Okay that's it for now thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.